All right, you guys, welcome back to a, the third episode of Rob's Sports Center. You know what I mean? I came prepared like always, but you know, my notes in the process, they got a little crumbled. So let me go ahead and straighten them bad boys out. Hey, I felt professional walking around with this. It just makes you just make you look so much more classified. But for the guys, for everyone who clicked on this video, I'm pretty sure you guys know that tomorrow for Thursday Night Football, we got the Chicago Bears, the 0-4 Chicago Bears going up against the 2-2 Washington Commanders. So I'm going to basically break down what I what I've kind of looked at based off the statistics and the teams that these teams played and what I think that one of them might can do to try to come up with the upper hand. So, you know, I, you know, I got I got it like here's the thing about statistics, statistics though. So if you see that a team is ranked, let's just say through four games, a team is ranked number one passing on um, defense. Right. So the thing that you got to take into consideration, you can't just always go by statistics. You got to think about, OK, who was these four teams that these guys played? Now, if these guys played Kansas City. They held them to like under, you know, 200 passing yards, which is rare. Hypothetically speaking now. They play Buffalo, Cincinnati, Cowboys, the teams that actually has a pretty stellar, a pretty stellar, consistent offense pass wise. Then if they held those guys down, then they legit. But if you hold down the New York Jets, Zach Wilson, that's not very difficult. Not saying that that's this situation, but I'm just kind of letting y'all know the approach as far as with statistics. So you can't always go by statistics. But if you go break it down, you got the 0-4 Bears who are 24th in offensive passing yards per game. They're 13th, and this is out of 32 if you didn't know, they're 13th in offensive rushing yards a game, which a lot of that contributes to Justin Fields, obviously. They're 29th in pass defense. They're 18th rush defense and defensive take. The defense take, this is like, when you look at a team like the 0-4 Chicago Bears, you actually think like, like you, you got, it, it's like, you understand why they are in the position that they are to a certain degree, right? These guys are 28 in the NFL in takeaways. Now, the thing that I'm noticing between them, because the, um, the commanders are 26 in the league in takeaways, I'm noticing that they give the ball away, but they don't necessarily take the ball away. And then you got to think about it like this. For those numbers, like say if, you're, if we're going to go with passing for the Bears, Bears are ranked number 24 through four games in passing yards per game. So once I look at that, I say to myself then too, so if they're ranked 24, it leads me to believe that they're not having long extended drives. They're probably going three and out. They might get one first down and then punt the ball back off, but they're not necessarily. So it is almost an illusion to a certain degree because you're putting your defense in a very impossible and a very uncomfortable situation. Because if you got, if your defense comes out first quarter, they hold the team to zero points. Right. And every position offensively, you guys have done a three and out. So at some point, because these guys are not having chance to rest, because if these drives are long and they're holding them or sometimes they get into field, they get into the red zone and they hold them just a field goal. Those extended drives play a very big part. You know, I, I'm not quite sure some of you guys might. I don't know if you play cornerback, even whether it's high, high school, college or NFL, you know, that cornerback um, is a difficult position. You know, to be sitting out there going and saying you're going to be running with a lot of these receivers on this level consistently and you're actually shutting them down in your offense. Not kind of it's, they're not rewarding you by putting up some points or if not putting up points, keeping you keeping stay on the field long enough for us to kind of fully recover. You know, so it's like once I'm once I'm looking at that, but then I also look at the the defensive. Oof, I look at the commander's defense, passive defense. They rank 20. So it's like. It's a hit or miss, you know what I mean? So this could be the game that they come out there and actually have a breakout game, I'm talking about Chicago Bears-wise, you know? But it's like, if you, like based off what, I've, what I'm looking at from the notes that I took and just from kind of seeing like little clips of the Commanders and the Bears, um, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning more so towards the Commanders. Now, I can't really necessarily give you a score prediction in a sense. I ain't got that good yet, you know? I'm still a little rookie to a certain degree, you know? I'm trying to get my feet wet and eventually I'll be able to get y'all some predictions. And plus, I would have to like kind of watch them just a little bit more to where I kind of won't just be going based off statistics. In this situation, I'm going based off a lot of statistics. Now, based off what I've seen from highlights or based off what I've heard from other football fans that, that we, that's fans of Chicago or the Commanders, whatever, you know, but I'm basically going more so off of statistics. But then it's like, for me, it's like this, right? So even when you look at the Bears, so I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a rundown on a four games. So week one, they lose to Green Bay, 38 to 20, right? That's Green Bay. Green Bay's a good football team. 
Week two, they lose to Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 27 to 17. Tampa Bay is a pretty good football. They love them or hate them. You can't, you know, even if you don't like Baker, you got to give credit where credit is due. Baker's playing some amazing football, you know what I mean? So you got to just give credit where credit is due. So you go to week three. They play the Kansas City two, the Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs beat them an abysmal 41 to 10. But I think that was more of a personal vendetta from Matt, you know, Nagy dealing with Chicago um, and him going to Kansas City. But then you look at the week four. This is the one that threw me for a loop. Week four, they lose to the Broncos. Keep in mind, they was up 21-0 at one point, and they didn't lose in overtime. So that lets you know that they things fell apart in such in, in, in a very fast paced manner. Now, here's the thong, here, here's the thing too. I'm big on momentum shifts. If you know sport, a lot of people will tell you those momentum shifts. It's like, so it's it's like say for instance, if you if when your defense comes out and they get a pick or they get a hard hit. It, you know, it's just something that, or, or if it's on offense, you got a player, your receiver make a one-hand catch, or your quarterback hurdles somebody to run him over if you got a Josh Allen, a Justin Herbert type quarterback. That just, it, it just shakes, it's, it's like it just shakes the whole spirit of the team and everybody on every aspect from offense, defense, special teams, receivers, running backs, fullbacks, if you got any on team, tight ends, quarterback, everybody kind of start to play with that added spirit. So that could have been a downfall to the Chicago Bears. They had them in a hole, but it was one play that happened that just miraculously turned around and it just shifted the momentum to where, and the thing about the NFL, man, it's like, if you ever lose the momentum, it, it, it can be difficult to get it back, man. It, it really can. It can be difficult to get it back, you know? Um, and then, like I say, I always, I always like to look at the quarterbacks too and kind of dissect the quarterbacks because the quarterbacks to a certain degree, I, I want to say a certain degree, I think the quarterbacks play a very vital part in a team's success. You know, not throwing no shade, no, not throwing no shade to the New Orleans Saints, but you know. Yeah, but the quarterback plays a very pivotal part into your team's success. So I kind of broke down um, what I've seen from Justin Fields and what I've seen from um, How, Mr. Howell or um, Howell. I'm going to call him Howell. Man, if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, that's my bad. Correct me if you ever run across this video. And, you know, I, I, I'll rectify that going forward. But... So I go back to week one. You got week one, they play in Green Bay. Justin Field goes 24 for 37, completion-wise, 216 yards, one touchdown, one pick. You go to week two, Field 16 for 29, 211 yards, one touchdown, and two picks. So you go to week three, Field 11, to 22, 11 for 22, 99 yards, one touchdown, one pick. You go to week four, Fields was 28 for 35, 335 yards, four touchdowns, and one interception. And it's ironic that his best game he played, they still didn't win. You know, because a lot of when you take into consideration, so I'm looking at it, the um, Bears have not scored over what 28 points. Yeah, they haven't scored over, they haven't scored over 28 points. And that 28 points ironically came against the team that came back and beat them. So that's that's very kind of that, that's very ironic to me. So um, but it also, but it, you know that. Passing is just one aspect to Justin Fields' game. You know, Justin Fields is a scrambler. And this is also, too, something I didn't get a chance to go actually look at. But I was looking at it from last year, and I'm pretty sure it's the same thing going into this year. Justin Fields got beat up. Man, I wouldn't even say just last year. As long as, as – much since Justin Fields has come into the league, he has been getting beat up every season. So, to a certain degree, we got to kind of empathize for him because I always say that's a curse and it's a blessing being a top-round pick because the, the curse is – you might end up going to a sorry team because the sorry teams obviously are going to have the higher picks. And if a team is very, very sorry, everybody's main thing is the quarterback. So good quarterbacks ain't going to last on the, on the board long. That's why you got some teams that's good, and if they feel like their quarterback is the future, they are draft up to get, you know, in order to be able to go on, to go take a quarterback, you know, if they got, um, if they have the opportunity to. So, but it's, 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 um, it's good because you get a pretty nice – extra pay, you know, incentive, I believe. I think is it what the not the top ten picks or top fifteen, correct me if I'm wrong. But so that I mean money wise, yeah, but career wise possibly not the best best decision. You look at Joe Burrow, his rookie year, he get hurt. Then he come back the second year, go to the Super Bowl, but he was still taking a lot of damage throughout those years too. And even look at him now, you know, so it's just it's just 
you have to be able to block for your quarterbacks, man. And it's my thing is this, if they're not really blocking well in the past, then it makes me, it leads me to believe that they're not necessarily bone blocking well in the run game. So we got to kind of give Justin Fields a fair shake. You know, I'm not quite sure who his receivers or Claypool. Oh yeah, that's another thing too. You got a couple injuries. I see Claypool, he's out um, officially for tomorrow. Jackson, who was a safety, he's out. Jenkins, which is a tackle, he's questionable game time decision. And you got um, Mr. Johnson, who's a cornerback, and he's out. And I'm gonna switch on over to the commanders while I'm on it. Uh, the wide receiver, Dotson, he's a game time decision. A cornerback, Holmes, he's a game time decision. A cornerback, Mr. Martin, he's a game time decision. A running back, um, C. Jr., he's questionable, which is probably going to end up being a game time decision. Um, and then you got a Samuel and a Samuel, who's a receiver, and a Saint just who's a cornerback. So they're all um, game time decisions because they didn't really have about what they out in or what. It just kind of had a blank space. So I'm assuming that that would be a game time decision. So we're going to go back to the to Justin Fields situation. You're losing what you would consider probably is your top receiver, which is Claypool not playing. So it's like, in my opinion, I don't think that he has the pieces around him to really maximize his potential. You know, so he's getting a lot of slander. He's getting a lot of blame. A lot of people are saying this and that about him. But I was like, we got to give this man a fair shake. I know we look at it a lot of times that these guys are professional football players. or they, So they're supposed to be able to overcome any type of adversity, which is to a certain degree. But you got to kind of give these guys a fair shot too, man. If they don't have the best options around them as far as players to play it, that they, you know, to play side, it's only so much that he can do. You know, it's only so much Justin Fields can do. Justin Fields can't go out there and play defense. Justin Fields can't go out there and kick field goals. Justin Fields can't go out there and return kicks, punts. That's the, so it's a team for that effort. Obviously, as the quarterback, you directly or indirectly take on the leadership role, you know, that, that just comes with the territory. But we got to be a lot more fair with him. But um, kind of make things a little bit shorter. But I, I think that the commanders, in my honest opinion, is going to probably come out on top. I, I mean, based off what I'm looking at and then based off the momentum. And keep in mind, the commanders just took the Eagles to an overtime. Eagles in a beat them, but they just took the Eagles into overtime. The commanders, in my opinion, is a pretty solid team. Um, I, I like the quarterback they got. I've seen a couple clips from him, and um, he like he's pretty good, which was the, uh, I don't know, it's the, they, the week three loss came to Buffalo Bills, which was a 37-3 to three loss, and he came out there and threw in a Bills more four interceptions. But then we go back to what I was saying. Was well, his offensive line blocking for him. He's a younger player. It could have been bad decision-making. So all these things kind of play a part into when you're making a decision but in my opinion, I just like the commanders are pretty much a pretty a better well-rounded team. And you know, in my opinion, if you look at their schedule, only teams they lost to was the um was the was the Bills and the Eagles, you know, which unfortunately the Eagles are in their division. But you know, the Bills, it ain't like you lost to a a, 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 a soup can, you lost to one of the best teams in the NFL. So, you know, obviously that 37 to 3, you wouldn't want to lose like that. But at the end of the day, it came to a team who's capable of putting up way more points than 37, you know. Um, but my prediction is I'm assuming that I believe that the commanders are going to come out on top. Um, but if you guys got any other opinions, if you think so, or if it's something that I missed that you are, if you're a Chicago fan and you feel like, well, we need to do we we need to do that. You missed that, man. Feel free to the comments. Check me. Feel free. And I also, man, if you guys, if it's something that I might have missed, you know, that you might say, well, Rob, I think you need to kind of look into this um, because this led to this. And this is something that hurt us that game, man. I'm all open for constructive criticism when it comes to sports. Like I said, I'm new into the analyst type thing. I'm, I'm, feel, I'm getting my feet wet and I'm feet wet. I'm enjoying it, man. So, you know, I, you know, I, I still got a ways to go, but I'm having a good time doing this, man. I really am. So, like I said, man, if you're a Bears fan, if you're a Commanders fan, or if you're just a fan of football, period, man, make sure you subscribe to the channel. When you subscribe to the channel, make sure you click on my post notification bell where you'll be notified on all things Rob Sports Center. And like I said, man, videos going to be coming out rapidly. You know, we got Sunday football, obviously. We got Monday football, obviously. We got Thursday football, obviously. We got Saturday Football, obviously. So it's going to be games coming out. You know, it's going to be a lot of um, breakdowns and stuff I'm going to be doing. But I'm not going to be doing breakdowns. I'm going to be doing debates on who's the greatest this, who's the greatest that, who's the great. So, man, we got I got a lot of content coming, man. I got a lot of content, man. So make sure you guys are stay tuned. And I'll see y'all in the next episode of Rob Sports Center.